do you support a living wage ordinance for the city of Eureka? Yes or no, and then give me an explanation. Thank you. This question goes to Natalie first. Great. So also thank you to all the organizations who are putting together questions, and thank you to all of you. I know that the moderator mentioned that our time is valuable, but your time is valuable too, so thank you so much. Um, I do support this, and I've supported <coughs> wage increases before, even when it was politically challenging. Um, today, Eureka has historically low unemployment and is seeing business growth and record new business license applications from a broad range of sectors, <coughs> but wages have not gone up proportionately. Um, I learned a lot about perspectives on this issue four years ago, and I believe that it would make sense to consider a county-wide ordinance, and I would prefer to see it go that way, but I want to support um, appropriate living wages for working people in this community. I will always support wages that keep pace with cost of living increases in our region and make it possible for people to afford to need, meet the needs of themselves and their families and also contribute so much to the local economy. I also believe that the narrative about Eureka not being business friendly is not rooted in fact, or if it is, it's rooted in something a long time ago and our staff has, have been making a lot of changes to be more business friendly at the direction of the council. I always want to be sure that the local business community feels heard, and if this issue were to move forward, I would want to have extensive meetings with the business community to hear their input. Anthony. Well, the answer is no. And you know how much fun it is saying that in the Union Temple? I just have to say it. <laughs> but, let's, but let's explain it. We're not doing it for shock value. We're doing it because we want to increase more business. We want economic expansion in Eureka. You can't do that by applying more artificial pressure on business owners, on people that hire people. You just can't do that. So let's get into it. Raising, raising the minimum wage, I gotta tell you guys, it's been great for the robotics industry because service jobs disappear every single time you raise the minimum wage $1. And I have here the minimum wage increases for every single year. And it's interesting, it's very telling. Every year it goes up, because we voted on it in the last election. Uh, but it's interesting that if you have, if you're a business and you have 25 or more employees, uh, you have to pay even more. It makes you wonder, here in Eureka, how many businesses are staying away from that 25 mark? How many businesses are 15 or 20 or 23 when they could actually be hiring more people? You see, every time you raise the minimum wage, you make it harder for business to happen in Eureka. And business is not exactly flourishing in Eureka. So that's why I'm saying no to this. It would be great if we could all make a million dollars an hour, but it doesn't work that way. There is something called the market. Prices are dictated based off of what we value our services at. And this is not good for medical either. If we could have economic expansion, businesses would be more willing to have benefit packages that include healthcare. You're not gonna get that if you push these living wage increases on businesses. It's not gonna happen. Again, what I like to argue is that sometimes a solution is worse than what it's trying to cure. And that's just another case here. It's not business friendly, it hurts the service industry really hard, and the track record is disastrous. How many businesses, if this were to happen in Eureka, how many businesses would just move outside the Eureka city limits and operate there instead? Not good for Eureka, especially not now, when we are struggling to maintain our industries. Okay. Um, so as someone who has been through the Small Business Development Center in Eureka and is a major in business and political science, and as someone who has worked full-time minimum wage jobs, I feel <laughs> like I, I'm just going to say yes, I do support a living wage ordinance in Eureka. Um, but more importantly, I want to focus on the middle class coming back into our community. And so this kind of has to be done really carefully. I believe that we should have an ordinance that addresses jobs that require prior knowledge and experience to have higher income than minimum wage. In this city, for example, to become a preschool teacher, you need to have some college education and prior experience to the position, and yet preschool teachers are only paid minimum wage. I would like to see Eureka become a place where business owners pay their employees a fair amount for the work they provide and prior experience required for the position. Um, minimum wage jobs used to be equivalent to entry-level positions, but that's no longer the case. 
In California, we will also see wage increases. The minimum wage will be at $12 per hour starting in January and will continue to rise until we get to $15 an hour. So that's just my education on that. Thank you. Leslie? Yes, I do support a uh, living wage ordinance for Eureka, but I, I do agree with Natalie that it would be more effective countywide. Um, and I think it'd be great to work on that as well. Um, and as someone who taught preschool for four years, I agree that it'd be great to see preschool teachers and people who work with young children get paid more. Um, let's see. I, I am also proud to say that the largest small manufacturer in Eureka, manufacturer in Eureka pays $15 an hour and provides health care for their employees. I think that's something that Eureka can be really proud of. Um, I also know a number of small business owners who really see that the well-being of their employees is what makes their business great, and those are the people who, who you know, help give the color and flavor and provide the work for the business. Um, you know, in 2017, the wealthy, ten, the wealthiest 10 percent of families, this is nationwide, had 76 percent of the total wealth. So I, I don't think it's a, an issue of money. I think it's more of where the money goes ultimately. Um, I do think something in addition to working towards a, um, a living wage would be to work at the state level and the national level um, to increase the earned income tax credit for low wage workers and then raise taxes on um, upper income earners. And this would provide a more long term um, solution to, to questions around minimum wage. Um, but right now we don't have control of that. Um, so thank you. Um, no, I do not support a living wage ordinance. I think that's another ordinance that we just don't need to have on the books. I believe experience and aptitude should warrant the pay you receive starting at federal minimum wage. I understand the state minimum wage can't be changed, and I, I'm not trying to say go back and fight that, but I'm just, it, it the, there shouldn't be a living wage. I, I believe there should be an apprenticeship programs or apprenticeship programs started at the city and county levels. And the handicapped should be on a curve so they're not left behind, but they are still expected to perform to a certain standard in order to make more money. I believe the apprenticeship programs would be very helpful with our industry, with our service industries, even as, as low as service industry, all industries, talking to labor councils, trying to see what kind of programs we could set up. But I believe that the able for able well, for employees, their exceptional performance should relate to merit based increases in wages, not a set increase just because you showed up for work that day. This could be achieved by having many discussions with the various labor unions to get input on implementing successful apprenticeship programs and allow uh, employees to know th that they're worth something and not just I'm showing up and I'm, I'm going to just do my job as little as I can, but you're worth something so you're actually getting an increase in pay. John? So this is where having somebody with, on the city council with my business experience <laughs> and my knowledge of the business community would be very helpful. I'm opposed to any artificial wage measure that is targeted for Eureka only. Just like Measure R was a huge mistake four years ago because it would have put Eureka businesses at an extreme Competitive disadvantage to other businesses located even right outside the city limits and it would have cost Eureka jobs it would have cost us <coughs> some of our local businesses who would have gone out of business now uh, a living wage ordinance sounds good but it's really a little bit confusing any any wage measure by the way on measure R after we got it defeated with over 62 percent of the vote um, the state went ahead and raised the minimum wage and they did it the right way. 
They made it statewide, and they made it phased in over a number of years. So in just a few years from now, the state minimum wage will be $15 an hour. So I went to a government website to find out what is a living wage, because it's a very vague term, and nobody can really tell me what it is. And I found uh, it did not help my confusion. So it was saying, and this is for Humboldt County specifically, but the living wage for one adult is only $11.50 an hour. But if you have one adult with three children, the living wage is $41 an hour. And it goes on from there. Uh, one adult, two children is $31 an hour. So you're going to have to define do a better job of defining what a living wage is. Does that mean if I have two employees and one has two children and the one is a single adult, I pay them dramatically different wages? All right, Jeannie. Thank you very much. So my issue with this is, again, define living wage. It's a subjective uh, ordinance or expression because but a living wage for me doesn't mean necessarily it's a living wage for you. Uh, I used to live in Orange County. I can no longer afford to live in Orange County anymore. Uh, the wages don't meet that. So I would also say that uh, Governor Jerry Brown has signed, as we've all talked about, uh, to increase the California minimum wage to $15 an hour over the next four years. My concern about this is this would be double what many other states in our country have. Some states are only at $7 an hour. Um, I have a marketing background and a business background. If I'm elected to the council, one of the things that I wanna do is support economic growth, economic expansion. I wanna support businesses that can offer jobs to our community and not drive businesses out. So, um, uh, again, we need to support businesses and startups so they can pri uh, provide jobs, and that would be my concern. I, there's not a set amount of what exactly a uh, living wage is, and I need to know more about that, and that would have to be fair across the board. Okay, the next question will be asked by Mike Hedeker, representing the Central Labor Council. And uh, the first person to respond will be Michelle. Good evening. Would you support a living wage ordinance for the city of Eureka? Um, right now, I'm not in support of a living wage ordinance, only because California has already instituted a higher minimum wage, and the increase has affected some businesses negatively. Um, and after looking at this a little bit further and not seeing a real clear definition of what a living wage is, it's different from one person to another, I would need more information before I would go behind a uh, proposed ordinance. Heidi? All right, well, first of all, I'd like to um, ask how you define a livable wage. It's something that is, um, when median houses are 850,000 in one city in our state and 250,000 in Eureka, it makes it difficult to know what that actually means. And California's minimum wage increases are already very aggressive over the next few years. I don't think that it's wise to outpace that. I think that when I look at a city like SeaTac, who did that, implemented a 15 hour uh, minimum wage in the, for businesses, businesses simply moved out of the city and it actually eliminated jobs. So the very thing we're looking for may not be the, the wisest thing. I think that, that California's determination to do it over a period of time was wise. I think that that was smart to give people a chance to think that through and how they're going to do that. Um, and we don't wanna have businesses eliminated from our city. We have many cities right around us. So unless this is something we look at as a whole that's much bigger than just a city, I do not think that it is a wise move to do that. Susan? So when I work in there, uh, I talk a lot about jobs and how important they are. I talk to a lot of industry leaders and even employers um, say that one of our greatest, um, 
weaknesses in Humboldt County is that we don't pay, we're at a competitive disadvantage for the wages that we pay. That said, I also could not support a citywide minimum, uh, I live, living wage, which I'm assuming is a new minimum wage. Um, I could possibly look at a county <coughs> one, but there is no advantage to the city of Eureka to, to impose a minimum wage where somebody can go just right outside the city walls. We are just starting to get businesses who want to come here, and we really need to foster that. Um, what I do want to do is really remind businesses the importance of investing in their employees. We have a lot of businesses who really understand the importance of buying the best ingredients for their products. They're going to do the best craftsmanship, and then they want to pay the least that they can for their employees. And I, I would like them to understand that you're at a competitive advantage for the best employees when you pay the best wages. So I'd really like to make it an educational moment to them. And also I would like as a city to identify and celebrate those businesses who do support um, the higher wages. We do have great ones out there and let's celebrate those um, and work on every way we can to raise, to raise the level of, the, of wage in our community. But a citywide minimum <laughs> I don't support. Uh, I don't support the living wage uh, proposal. Uh, as of January first, two thousand twenty-three, uh, the minimum wage in California will be fifteen dollars, and it's uh, it, uh, that, that's just four years from now. Um, the, it'll disadvantage the businesses in Eureka uh, tremendously. You know, that uh, be no reason for anybody to even open a business here. Uh, if, uh, that uh, came about. Also, it's very difficult to, to pin down what's a living wage. You know, a guy with six kids has a different living wage than, you know, uh, somebody with just one kid or, or myself uh, who has no kids. So that, uh, how do you, you know, where do you draw those lines? What, what's a living wage for people? Um, the, uh, uh, the other uh, situation is that the, um, uh, uh, besides the definition, is that, you know, that's what unions are for. That's why people join unions is to get better benefits and better wages. So, you know, I mean, if you wanna, you know, hit the union movement and, uh, uh, and, and, and knock them back further than they've already been knocked, uh, pass this thing, because then why would somebody join a union? There's no reason to join a union if, you're, if, you, if there's already a, a government mandated living wage. I'm a member of the union at HSU, and uh, you know, they do provide a very good service, and they, 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 they represent us very well. So my feeling is, uh, I'd say support the union movement, don't, uh, don't have living wage laws. Kim. So I actually, uh, when I first ran for office, was uh, worked very vigilantly with the Measure R campaign, uh, which was to support a living wage for our city, and that failed. And I think one of the reasons that that failed had to do with it being just in our city. I think that if we had a county-wide ordinance, it made a pretty big difference. I support a fair wage. You know, I know a lot of single moms out there that work one to two jobs to support their kids. So, you know, I, I think that it's important that we um, consider them as well. Um, and I love the idea of investment in our employees. And I, you know, I work at Eureka High, I'm part of that union, and they do take care of me. Um, I, I make an almost living wage, um, almost, you know. Um, and I think it is hard to define, but I think that we need to consider that there are people out there currently working one or two jobs that can barely afford their rent, that can barely afford their food, that are going to, to food for people to get their food or getting vouchers for their kids. And I think that we need to continue this conversation and to continue to move forward and look at this over and over again. You know, we say $15 is a fair wage. I, you know, I don't know. I think it does depend on the person and we need to really look at that. For the next question,